This is Advanced Algebra Lesson 6-1, Quadratic Expressions, Rectangles, and Squares. This lesson will begin defining what it is to be a quadratic, and it will take a look at some of the vocabulary necessary to begin studying what it is to be a quadratic function. First off, I'd like to talk about what the word quadratic comes from. It's a Latin word, um, quadratus, which means to make square. And there are a couple of equations that you're very familiar with that you've studied in previous courses. For example, the area of a square, which is a equals s squared, and the area of a circle, which is a equals pi r squared. We also studied quadratics in chapter 2 when we looked at direct variation functions in the form of f of x equals kx squared in chapter, um, and that was in chapter 2. So the first things I'd like to take a look at is what it is to be a quadratic expression. It takes on the form, as I've highlighted here, ax squared plus bx plus c. When we want to make it an equation, we just set it equal to 0. We can also look at it in terms of a function, and the only difference now is that it's in mapping notation or function notation, f of x um, equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And then the um, standard form for a quadratic, once again, I've highlighted in yellow, ax squared plus bx plus c. We do have a general quadratic expression in two variables. So if we have x plus y squared and we put it in standard form, that would give us the form, the equation a, or the expression ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f. These are all the vocabulary that you need to be familiar with as we start beginning our study of quadratics and quadratic functions. One way to think about quadratics is to think of it in terms of two linear expressions multiplied together. And we sometimes do that by looking at area. So I'm going to use an area model here to just kind of begin our, our study of quadratics. If I take the area of a square or of a rectangle that has side length x plus 2 and side length of x plus 3, I can then find an area by multiplying my lengths together. So that would give me x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 6. So the area of this rectangle, given these two linear expressions as its side lengths, I would end up with x squared plus 5x plus 6. And that would be the area of my rectangle. And as you can see, I have uh, an, ex or an equation that is degree 2. So we have a quadratic. We're going to look at a more complicated problem here. Before I go to the algebra problem that's underneath this box, I want to just take a look at this problem in terms of a picture. A portrait is 20 centimeters by 90 centimeters. A frame around the portrait is f centimeters wide. Write the total area of the portrait and the frame in standard form. So I'm going to draw a picture of this picture of the portrait and the frame around it and, and label that. So as you can see here, I have a portrait that is 20 centimeters by 90 centimeters, and then I've added the frame around it. So if I were to take the dimensions of this, I would have 20 for my height here, plus I have to add an f and an f, so that would be 20 plus 2f. And the other dimension would be 90 plus f and f, so that would be 90 plus 2f. And that would be the expression that I could use to find the area. Now, you have learned to find the product of two linear equation or linear expressions by using FOIL, or you can also think of it as you're just beginning out this session by looking at it in terms of an area model. So I have 20 and 2f as one dimension and 90 and 2f as the other. I can find the area of my little pieces. This would be 1800. This would be 40f and 180f and 4f squared. If I combine like terms with these two and put this in standard form, remembering my squared term, then my just my degree 1, and then my constant. So that would be 
f squared plus 220f plus 1800 would be the area of my picture and my portrait. Now I'd like to take a look at this in terms of the algebra, or in terms of algebra. If we look at this problem by using algebra, taking length times width, we can say that 20 plus 2f times 90 plus 2f would give me the area of this portrait and frame. I can go ahead and use an extended distributive property, 20 times 90 plus 20 times 2f plus 2f times 90 plus 2f times 2f. It's also known as FOIL, first terms, outside terms, inside, and lasts. We combine our like terms now. 20 times 90 is 1800. I'm sorry, we'll just multiply through here. 20 times 90 is 1800. 20 times 2f is 40f. 2f times 90 is 180f. And 2f times 2f is 4f squared. Combine like terms then. 1800 plus 220f plus 4f squared. And then we know we want to put everything in standard form, so in this situation, so 4f squared plus 220f plus 1800 would be the solution. So here we've done, we've looked at the area of two linear, or we're, we're looking at an area of something that has two linear expressions for its dimensions, and it gives us a quadratic, and in standard form, we have 4f squared plus 220f plus 1800. And if we think about this in terms of our ABCs, our A before, our B is 220, and our C is 1800. This next section called quadratic expression for squares is going to be very important. You're going to use the pieces of this throughout this entire chapter. The expression x plus y is an example of a binomial. A binomial is an expression with two terms. The square of a binomial can be thought of as the square area of a square whose side length is the binomial. I'm going to use this area model one more time in this lesson for you just to kind of get another picture of what this looks like. As you can see, since it's a square, we're going to have the same dimension on both on the length and the width. So 2a plus b times 2a plus b. Find the area of the little pieces. 2a times 2a is 4a squared. 2a times b is 2ab. 2a times b is 2ab, and b times b is b squared, which gives me an area of 4a squared plus 4ab plus b squared. And as you can see over here, you can also think of it in terms of algebra, which is what I really want you to do. I want This is where I want you to, to get 2a plus b squared is the same as the linear expression 2a plus b times 2a plus b. If we do our First, outside, inside, last, 2a times 2a is 4a squared, 2a times b is 2ab, 2a times b, 2ab, and b squared. <clears throat> if we put that in simplified form, standard form, we also have 4a squared plus 4ab plus b squared. When a linear expression is multiplied by itself or squared, the result is a quadratic expression. So when we take a look at a quadratic expression that is squared, x plus 6 squared, we can expand it, and that looks like x plus 6 times x plus 6. And if we use the extended distributive property, x squared plus 6x plus 6x plus 36 simplifies to x squared plus 12x plus 36. We have, because this happens so often where we will square linear expression, we have a binomial square theorem that we can use. And it looks as follows. x plus y squared is the same as x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. So instead of going through the process of expanding everything, we can apply this theorem. We can take our first term and square it. We can take our last term and square it. And to get this middle piece, we take the product of the two terms x plus y, and we multiply that times 2, and it gets us 2x plus y. Let's see if we can apply it here. x, first term squared, so that'd be x squared. Last term squared, that's 36. The product of the two terms, 6 times x times 2, gives me 12x. It also works when we're subtracting, 
the middle term is just a subtraction because when I multiply these two together I would get a negative and if I and then the last term is positive here because if I square two negatives that gives me a positive so the binomial square theorem is going to be extremely important throughout our study in this chapter and in chapters to come so really make sure you pay special attention to the binomial square theorem we have one more example that we're going to use in this lesson and that's the th number three here a large circular pipe coming up from the ground is surrounded by a circular region of drainage stones the distance from the edge of the pipe to the outer edge of the drainage stones is w feet and the radius of the drainage stones including the large pipe is seven feet write a quadratic expression in standard form for the area of the opening of the circular pipe not including the drainage stones remember from geometry the area of a circle is pi r squared so I'd like you to stop the video now and see if you can set up an equation to help us find the area of the circular pipe as you can see area equals pi r squared and for the radius of this we want just this inside piece so I have the whole thing as 7 and I want to take out W so that would be pi times 7 minus W squared I'm going to use my binomial square theorem to find my find this exp terms expanded so that would be 7 squared is 49 D negative W squared is W squared and the product of these two times 2 7 times a negative W times 2 would give me a negative 2 times 7 times W so we have 49 minus 14 W plus W squared now I need to distribute my pi and I need it in standard form so that would give me pi W squared minus 14 pi W plus 49 pi square feet the second part of this problem is to just find the area of the drainage stone so basically they want you to find the outside ring of this circle so in order to do that that area would equal the total area minus the area of the open pipe we found the open pipe above so I'm gonna put that in on this part of the expression and then finding the area of the whole circle that would be 7 squared times pi so I'm gonna expand that out 7 squared times pi would give me 49 pi and then we found the open pipe area down or up above so I'm just gonna bring that down because we know that's the same as pi times the square of 7 minus W now if we look at this if we look at this we have 49 pi and we're subtracting that from 49 pi so that would give a, these would cancel out so that would leave us with a negative pi w squared plus 14 pi w and that would be the area of the drainage stones in square feet so this concludes lesson 6 1